Isla Garcia. I'm the founder and CEO of The Millennial Nutritionist. We are dietitians that help millennials lose weight without giving up their favorite foods. And today I wanna to talk to you about sweet potatoes. So I was gifted a trip to go to visit some sweet potato farmers, learn about sweet potatoes with some food scientists and learn about how they're processed. This was a gifted trip from the North Carolina Sweet Potato Commission, but there was no like payment for any content. I'm just making this out of the goodness of my heart because I want you to learn about sweet potatoes so that you'll eat more. As a registered dietitian, I know that clients tend to do better with weight loss if we eat more produce and we focus on eating more foods. So I like to expose you to foods that you can eat more of so that you're not in a negative mindset, but you're in a positive mindset and the high calorie foods will just naturally go in anyway. Instead of having to always focus on not eating them, we're focused on what we can eat. And a sweet potato is a great food to eat if you're trying to lose weight. They are full of fiber, which helps us to feel full on less calories. There's also a lot of beta carotene, which we need for good vision. We need for our brain to function and we need for our skin to look healthy among many, many other benefits of eating beta carotene. Another thing that I love about sweet potatoes is it's just like a normal food. It's not anything we have to disguise. We don't have to spend a lot of money on it. It's something that just grows out of the ground. It supports our farmers, which without farmers and them getting a good amount of money to sustain themselves and their family, they wouldn't survive and then we wouldn't have food and the whole system would just come crashing down. So we need to make sure we reward these people that make our normal natural food so they can continue to feed us. So I'm gonna tell you all about what I learned on my trip, which most of it comprises of the history of sweet potatoes, why North Carolina become a powerhouse for sweet potatoes and how food scientists were involved in that process. So why we can respect them. Um, also how the sweet potato is made and processed and how it gets to our plate. And then the third thing is kind of like, what do you do with this information? Why is it important? And what should we be trying to do with sweet potatoes? So we were flown down to North Carolina, which is actually where I grew up for most of my life. So I was um, happy to see a local agricultural situation in the um, state that I call home. And the first night we learned all about the history of sweet potatoes and why the North Carolina Commission is such a big deal and why sweet potatoes are a big deal in North Carolina in general. Um, North Carolina exports about 60% of the sweet potatoes that we eat around the whole US. And how it got there is actually a really cool public health story that made me love sweet potatoes so much more. So um, a while back, tobacco was king in North Carolina. It's um, a lot of farmers grew it and it was processed and sold from North Carolina, like Winston-Salem, High Point, Greensboro, all these areas that I knew because they were kind of ghost towns when I lived there, used to sell a lot of tobacco and cigarettes. So, you know, public health did wonders with getting people to smoke less, but unfortunately that means that farmers didn't have a lot to grow because you grow tobacco leaves. But what they found was a good substitute to replace was sweet potatoes. They seemed like seamlessly brought in sweet potatoes to grow on the fields that they used to grow tobacco on. They were able to use a lot of the same equipment and so they were able to still support these farmers so they could grow other things because from what I saw, none of these farmers only grew sweet potatoes. They grew other foods that we need to survive. A lot of them also grow peanuts. Um, so, you know, if a farmer can't sustain his life and his family um, from one crop, then maybe all the other crops will go away too. And, I love my peanut butter too much to see the peanut butter go away. So we need all these foods to, you know, stay within a system. Um, but yeah, they seamlessly trained over to sweet, sweet potatoes. But at the time, I think like Louisiana and, and um, Mississippi and Alabama, all those states were really into growing sweet potatoes. And this is interestingly where the whole yam situation got confused. So sweet potatoes are not yams, which I grew up calling them yams. Um, they are a whole different thing. And I think it's because of the Creole influence. Um, African, like uh, African countries eat a lot of sweet potatoes. I mean, um, a lot of yams. And um, when, you know, they were brought over as slaves, they called it yams. And then marketers thought it was a funny word. A lot of things rhyme with yam. It's, you know, I am a yam, you're a yam. You're, there's a lot you can do marketing wise with yam, they told us. And unfortunately, sweet potatoes are a wholly other thing than yams, and they accidentally just conflated the two. And then to this day, lots of people still think sweet potatoes are yams when they're actually very, very different. So sweet potato is not a yam. They're not similar. We don't really even eat yams ever. 
Um, but anyway, so that piece of history went along with it. But as sweet potatoes started to become a crop that North Carolinians, North Carolinian farmers could grow, food scientists went a way to figure out how they could make it more financially beneficial to these farmers. So they had to find a way to trump the other states. So food scientists figured out how to um, grow sweet potato uh, that was more um, plentiful, so more in each crop could grow. Also a way for it to withstand disease and insects, and they found the Covington sweet potato, um, which now when you go into a grocery store, you can actually notice what type of sweet potato you eat. I live in Texas, so I don't see a lot of the Covingtons. I think they're more on the East Coast. I think we get a lot of our sweet potatoes from California, but we're gonna try to get North Carolina sweet potatoes <laughs> to support those farmers out here. But you can notice, it's really interesting to kind of notice that there are actually those distinctions on there. Um, but anyway, so we learned that that's how they kind of came to be and they came to be so plentiful compared to the other states. So I didn't realize that I guess different states have their own type of sweet potato um, that you might not even really notice but we did kind of try the tipper type, so you, there's a slight difference, but it's more just like that state is, that's what they grow. Um, and I don't know if they have like proprietor ownership over the sweet potato, but that is why North Carolina sweet potatoes are a thing. Um, so next we went to the farms, started with the seed. So they call it the sweet potato seed, but you know, sweet potatoes really just come from old sweet potatoes when you grow them. So if you keep a sweet potato or potato in the, pantry for too long then it starts to sprout and that's what you grow in the ground so there's one farmer we met and that's basically his job was to grow these kind of like seedlings so he grew the sweet potato seeds and we kind of saw how that happened and so this plays into what these food scientists do so they came up with this Covington sweet potato but like you know the food scientists or the horticulturalist sweet potato farm scientists they figure out what is the best type of sweet potato, the best variety um, to give the farmer to grow the seed, to then give to the other farmers to grow an actual sweet potato so we get it on our plate. And so we were able to talk to the sweet potato scientists and ask them how they are able to select for different traits. They don't genetically modify, um, but you know, genetic modification happens naturally every single year when different things cross over in our bread, but then they go and select those potatoes that just happened that year and see if there's something that can continue to encourage that growth with. So we asked them why they couldn't just make something that was just more fibrous, like, right? Why can't you just select something that's super fibrous or grow it in that direction? And they said they definitely could, but it would not be as easy to eat because it would be so stringy. So it was really interesting to hear like the fine line between like what they could do, probably they could do like anything. They can breed it for different tastes. They can breed it for different amounts of sugar. They can breed it for different colors. We tried all the different types of this process that they do. Um, they can breed for, um, they showed us that like one type of variety is really good for microwaving because it's a little bit, I think has a little bit more water within it. Um, other types have a, little bit of an easier time being fried because they're a little bit more starchy. Um, other types are really good for baking. Other types are really good for sauteing and stuff like that. There's different colors that they can breed for as well for what people want and perceive in a sweet potato. So we tried all the different types and got to kind of really pick their brain about it. And they were really funny. They were so excited about the sweet potatoes. I mean, it's like literally what their whole life is about is all these sweet potatoes. And so it made us excited too. And it made me really excited to see the partnership between the scientist and the farmer. It's just like amazing because I feel like so many times we don't really see that relationship. Um, we see so much, I think on social media about different powders or different supplements or different gummies and different drugs that scientists make, but we never really think about the science that goes into growing our food. And like I said, we've got to keep this system going or we won't have food anymore which isn't a problem now, but it used to be a problem a long time ago. And so we don't ever want to go back to that place. So we need to keep this system going. And it's just so wholesome to love to grow food, I think. We are then transported to the fields. We go to a different farmer, his field, and see how they're harvested. So the thing I didn't realize is sweet potatoes are really only harvested like a couple weeks out of the whole year, but they last up to years later. They told us actually the sweet potatoes that we eat at the grocery store are probably from like last year's harvest. 
Um, I don't think that it has much to do with like the nutritional value doesn't decrease, but sweet potatoes, if you're looking for a shelf stable food, I learned that they are definitely a shelf stable food if you keep it in the right conditions. I think they have to be around like 50 to 60 degrees to last all year long, but so many farmers just keep them in their um, barrels like all year long too. So um, anyway, they're planted in like early March from those seeds that have been um, picked to um, by the scientists to decide this is the variety that I think is gonna be the best to withstand disease and withstand um, different types of bugs and things like that. And then they are harvested. They're harvested by hand, which was crazy that these things aren't like way more expensive. Um, farm workers do harvest them and you have to harvest them by hand because the skin is so soft that you can just brush it off. Um, so if you were to use like a tractor, then they would just all get destroyed. So you have to be gentle and harvest them by hand, but these guys were like so fast and it's so crazy how fast they were to harvest them all by hand. Um, so they're out there harvesting them and next the sweet potatoes have to be what they call cured which we were all really interested in this because I don't know if other vegetables really have to go through this process, but whenever you pull sweet potato out of the ground, it's really gentle. And so you harden the skin up by curing it. So it's basically like this sauna that we went in, that the sweet potatoes, it's a little humid, it's warmer, that they heat up a little bit and it also brings out the sugar profile. So they're not as sweet if you were to eat it straight from the ground, but um, they get a sweeter as they cure for, I think it was like a week or so. Um, it's not like the calories become higher, so you're not gonna get a lower calorie potato if you eat it when it's directly out of the ground, but um, it will taste a little bit better. However, I did try a sweet potato that was fresh from the field in our little uh, science <laughs> lecture, and I actually really liked it. I think it tasted a little bit better than a regular sweet potato, so maybe they'll have that on the shelves eventually. But from the curing process, they then go to be processed to put in a box for us to pick from the grocery store. So we went to a processing plant some farmers have this on site, the really, really big productions do, but some people also have to send it to a processing center. So they get washed, they get hand-picked again, this is mostly by hand, and they do get sprayed with a fungicide. Um, that was really the only chemical that I saw being processed through the whole thing. I'm sure there's more that goes into like the fields, but um, that was the only chemical that I saw. So then they um, literally, I think we just wash it with water, they bring it all the way through. Um, a lot of people pick them for different sizes, so we learned that um, there's very little waste that goes into the sweet potatoes because apparently restaurants like these huge sweet potatoes because they want to make, they don't care how pretty the outside is, right? Um, where like consumers, so like me and you would want a sweet potato that's smaller. So um, they sort those out for different types of buyers that want to buy it. So the smaller ones will go to, to the um, like grocery stores and the bigger ones will go to like restaurants. And so we did see like Trader Joe's boxes. Trader Joe's buys a lot of North Carolina sweet potatoes. They buy the purple ones too, which is really cool. So if you live in North Carolina or the East Coast, honestly, and go to Trader Joe's, check to see if it says it's from North Carolina and you're eating a sweet potato likely from a farm that I went to. But um, they get picked all the way through and then boxed up all pretty much by hand, just a conveyor belt lets it go through. And then it's shipped to a grocery store anywhere along the, honestly, the East Coast is what we saw. So coming down to like how this kind of applies to you and what you should do with this information, I did speak to some of the farmers. We went to a, a really cool um, women farmer appreciation dinner for farmer women that are in the sweet potato uh, world. And I spoke to some of them and I spoke to the farmer that we went to the field of and you know talked about some of their struggles currently and was asking them if this inflation that's going on right now is helping them and they said actually it's not. They're not getting rewarded with extra money. Um, they're just being charged more and then also their labor costs are going up. So those farm workers are getting ready to earn, be able to earn more money, which great for them, but unfortunately the farmer is the one that takes the cut. And as a business owner myself, I understand that that's really stressful. Like if my, if my prices were increasing and my workers also had to be paid more the only one that's taking the cut would be me and it's hard to sustain a business on that and so that's what these farmers are kind of currently going through with inflation and with the workers um, being able to be paid more and so what we can do about it is we can try to ask for more sweet potatoes so it just goes back to eating more produce we need to support these farmers they love what they do it's a multi-generational endeavor for most of them there was one girl that um we were there and you know most most of them went to college. There are colleges that you have to learn about because there's so much science that goes into farming that um, 
she wanted to farm because her grandma started her sweet potato, their family sweet potato farm and grew it and it was so big and farming is such an expensive thing. Um, and she, that's all she wanted to do was she wanted to, to, it seemed like connect with her grandma in that way to be able to continue that mission of farming. For her, it was a very strong female lead of a business, which is awesome. I hope my grandkids one day want to, you know, continue to do the millennial nutritionist. Um, but farming is very just like in people's bloods and they do it because of the mission. They do it because they want to feed people and they love being in the land and they love all the things that really go into it. And so we need to continue to support farmers or we're not going to have any food. <laughs> so as for North Carolina sweet potatoes where you were, um, explore eating different types of sweet potatoes. You can follow me over on Instagram and I've made some different sweet potato recipes that you can easily look at. You can go on the North Carolina Sweet Potato Commission website and they also have a lot of sweet potatoes on there as well, different sweet potato recipes. One thing, we had another scientist come to us who was actually a food scientist and he talked about how He's done a lot of research to uh, compare the white potato to the orange sweet potato, which actually they're not related, which is very interesting. But um, if you were to pick a sweet potato or over a white potato, it actually has less of a glycemic index response. So it's possible that it doesn't spike your insulin as much. So if you have insulin resistance, pre-diabetic, a sweet potato might be a little bit better for you because it's gonna help regulate all of that. There's definitely a huge health benefit to also eating a sweet potato over a white potato. Ways that you can add more into your diet, um, you can ask for sweet potato fries. Sweet potato fries were apparently a huge win for the sweet potato business. You can ask for those over regular fries. You can get a, a sweet potato over a regular potato. You can cook with more sweet potatoes. Um, I wanna try to figure out how to make more Asian dishes with purple sweet potatoes. So if anybody has any recipes, please comment below. I have a personal love for the Blue Zones, uh, like research uh, thing, and they talk about how in Okinawa, which is one of the Blue Zone spots, they eat a lot of purple sweet potatoes. So it's on my list to try to figure out how to make them. Um, apparently people in Asia steam more sweet potatoes or purple sweet potatoes than we do. And there's a different vitamin and mineral profile in purple sweet potatoes too. So if you like being adventurous, try some purple sweet potatoes. They're there, I've been trying to pay attention to them more. There's honestly a whole different, a bunch. There's white types of sweet potatoes. There's ones with purple skin and a white inside. There's ones with like orange skin and a purple inside. So there's lots of different types of sweet potatoes that you can look at. And pick a sweet potato, pick a sweet potato and thank your farmer for growing it for you. Um, but I hope that this was informative for you. Please follow us on Instagram, um, the.millennial.nutritionist. We do recipe videos over there. We give you daily tips on how to lose weight sustainably and just feel better overall.